Well, we talk a lot about uh, Jefferson's uh, theory of the agrarian nation um, beforehand. Um, we talk a lot about the yeoman farmer and how um, and the the values of property um, and the whole uh, John Locke's vision of life, liberty, and property, not the pursuit of happiness, but that idea of property, even though it's dropped from the Declaration of, Con of, of Independence, um, still maintains, you know, great um, power and um, in investment in his mind. And so we talk a lot, especially when we talk about the West, of that idea of the agrarian nation, this vision that this is America's garden, and it's going, this is, this is how we're going to be different from Europe. Um, this is how we're going to get away from the original sin of slavery. We're not going to depend on anybody. I'll give a little background about um, Washington Civilization Program and the um, the role that Indians play in the Constitution. Um, then I sort of give them this, and it pulls it all together a little bit. Jefferson ties it all together, and then um, the next day we talk about Lewis and Clark, <laughs> basically, and they read his instructions. We don't, you know, pick apart every sentence necessarily, but I sort of just ask them to get into groups and outline the argument, outline how he gets from the beginning to asking for money. What is his argument? What is he asking them to do? Why is he putting this in terms of commerce? And what does that have to do with Indians? Where do Lewis and Clark, you know, come in in all of this? Um, and why does, you know, how does he convince Congress that it's in their interest? fund this expedition. Sometimes I have them read the original, sometimes I give them both because they, if they really try, he has, Jefferson has pretty good handwriting and so they can get most of it. Um, you know, the limitations are it's a little wordy in areas um, and it is a complex argument, but that's kind of the point of the document.